Amen. Thank you. Philippians chapter 4, and uh, we're going to look at a few verses here. I believe tonight will help you if you'll listen. Uh, we've been in the book of Philippians now for a few weeks, and um, or, or uh, all since the first of the year. And so I want to give you a couple thoughts this evening out of Philippians chapter 4. And, um, you know, we have one of the greatest promises in all of the Bible found right here in Philippians 4, my life. I've had to practice this and practice this and preach this to myself. And uh, sometimes I don't understand the things that go on in life. I don't. But I can trust Him. I can trust the Lord. He knows. And so look at uh, Philippians chapter 4 and verse 1. The Bible says, Therefore, my brethren, dearly beloved, and long for my joy and crown, so steadfast in the Lord, my dearly beloved. I beseech Eudeus and beseech Syntyche that they be of the same mind in the Lord. And I entreat thee also, true yoke fellow, uh, help those women which labored with me in the gospel, with Clement also, and with other my fellow laborers, whose names are in the book of life. Rejoice in the Lord always, and again I say, rejoice. Let your moderation be made. Uh, let your moderation be known unto all men. The Lord is at hand. Boy, great verses again. As I said this morning, Paul is setting the tone. He says, "Rejoice in the Lord always," and again I say, rejoice. So we're the theme of even Philippians, of course, the whole theme is the joy of the Lord. But then the chapters break down into different parts of your joy and some that may try to steal your joy. But in verse number 6, he says these two verses, 6 and 7. I want you to focus in on them this evening. It says, Be careful for nothing, but in everything by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving, let your requests be made known unto God. And the peace of God, which passeth all understanding, shall keep your hearts and minds through Christ Jesus. There is a need for peace tonight. There's a need for peace. I'm talking about peace in our, in our midst of the storms, peace in our church, peace in our families, peace in our young people. And if there's a great promise in the Bible... We have found it tonight in Philippians chapter 4. These verses have brought hope and encouragement literally to millions of believers throughout the years. I would say that for me personally, I have relied on these verses more than just about any verses in all the Bible. God knows how I am. I am a natural worrier. I am a natural uh, just... Anxiety. I, I get nervous about things. I get nervous and worry, and sometimes I'll even find myself uh, not sleeping right and not and just worrying about things and letting it consume me as a person. And I know if that's happening to me, then it's probably happening to you. And uh, and the Bible tells us here in verse six: Be careful for nothing. That word "careful" is the same word we get our word "anxious." Be anxious for nothing. Be careful for nothing. So let's not, let's not uh, be anxious about things. Let's not be uh, living in worry. These verses are able to speak to you and to me and to meet us at our need today. Hey, so before we get into the text this evening, I want to ask you uh, a couple questions. What is your need this evening? What is it that has been keeping you up at night or keeping you up from rest or whatever it is? You say, preacher, it's a financial problem or it's a marital problem or it's a child problem. I'm not sure what it could be tonight. It could be a whole host of things, but I know this. Be careful for nothing. Be anxious for nothing. I want to give you a few thoughts out of our text tonight. The first thing I come to is the first few words or letters uh, in... Uh, in, the, in verse number 6, there's a need for peace. He says, be careful for nothing. Be careful for nothing. So here's a command to stop being anxious or worried about all the things that make us anxious. So we are commanded not to be anxious, and yet the truth is we are anxious about many things. I want you to grab your Bible and I want you to see what the Lord said about this on the Sermon on the Mount. Turn to Matthew uh, chapter number 6. Matthew chapter number 6. I want you to notice what many people are anxious about this morning, or this evening rather, or any time of the day. And I'm stuck on the morning, so uh, 
but I promise you I'm not anxious right now, all right? So um, that's not my problem. Uh, Matthew chapter 6, and I want to give you a couple things that the Lord said that many are anxious about. He kind of gives us three areas which I find the most common areas where I would believe people would be very anxious about things. Look at verse number 27. Now we'll skip around just for a moment. This is the Sermon on the Mount. Probably the most popular message that our Savior preached while here on earth. Here's what he says in verse 27. Which of you by taking thought can add one cubit unto his stature? Now notice, go back to verse number 25. Therefore I say unto you, take no thought for your life, what ye shall eat or what ye shall drink, nor yet for your body what ye shall put on. Is not the life more than meat? And the body than raiment? Behold the fowls of the air, for they sow not, neither do they reap, nor gather into barns, yet your heavenly Father feedeth them. Are you not much better than they? He's saying, hey, what, is your, what, what are you worried about? You're worried about raiment? You're worried about clothing? You're worried about food? And he's saying physical life in general. So I believe tonight that many people worry about just the physical needs that they may have. You say, well, preacher, what would that be? Well, a physical life in general, uh, maybe clothing, what some will wear. And I'm not sure if there's anybody here tonight worried about what clothes that they have. We I made the announcement this morning about the uh, Miracle Hill that we take clothes up there and we no longer needed clothes for the ladies. We needed some men clothing but not the lady clothing. But I'm sure there's people out here in society that they actually worry about where they're going to get clothes, especially maybe for the winter, they, they, uh, whatever the need may be. And the Lord is saying, hey, don't worry about the clothing. Can you imagine in the Bible times, a little different than the times we're living in today. They didn't have stores like we have today where we just drive up in a store and we can purchase uh, clothing like that. Uh, their clothing was often made and purchased in markets and people uh, of less fortune could uh, purchase those things. And so you understand that our Lord was dealing with those that may have a physical need like clothing, what we're going to wear. He said in verse 28, food and drink in verse number 31. Look at it in, uh, in Matthew uh, 6, 31. He said, therefore take no thought saying, what shall we eat? And what shall we drink? Or wherewithal shall we be clothed? There's people here tonight that may be worried about where their meals are going to go uh, these next few weeks or months. And they're worried about food on the table. And he's saying don't worry about that. Think of all the things that we have to do in a given week. We pick up the kids from school. We figure out what's for dinner in the evening. And we pay bills that come in. And often people worry about some of the things that Jesus here is saying we shouldn't be worrying about. And sometimes it's a, a lot of times I find that people when they're anxious about something it's either a health concern or it's a financial concern. Many times people are not anxious over their spiritual being. I don't find too many people, Brother Lee, too worried about their spiritual state and that's what bothers me. Never do I, very seldom do I ever talk to someone they say, Preacher, I've just not had that relationship like I should with God. and Very seldom. It's usually some physical need. And I believe our Lord is reminding us that our physical life in general, there are some needs. So He brings up these things that may come up that we would worry. Hey, our future, what will happen? Look at verse 34 of Matthew 6. He says, Take therefore no thought for the morrow, for the morrow shall take thought of the, uh, for the things of itself. Sufficient unto the day is the evil thereof. And so all these are pretty much the same thing that calls us to be anxious today. Some people are just worried in general, what's going to happen tomorrow? What's going to happen next week? What's going to happen next year? What's going to happen in the future? Hey, I don't know, and neither do you. So guess what? We just have to trust the Lord. I don't know what's going to happen tomorrow. I really don't. I know it's Monday. I know that, hey, if the Lord will leave us here, it's Monday. And, and uh, my kids are out of school, so I get to spend a little bit more time with them. I don't know if that's good or bad as far as sending them back to school because they over Christmas break, we were ready to ship them back. And uh, we were ready to ship them back. But we look forward to that. Hey, I don't know what tomorrow holds and neither do you. So Jesus is saying, hey, let that just handle itself. 
Uh, there was a man a few uh, weeks ago that I was speaking to and he said something about the end times. And he said, do you know in 2029 that there's going to be an asteroid that's going to hit the world and, and uh, the earth and it's going to uh, destroy parts of the earth and this and that. And I, I looked at him and I said, man, that's the silliest thing I've heard. 2029. Man, I, I mean, that's just silly stuff and, and, and things that he's saying. Well, but don't you understand that God is in control of that? Amen. So that man, wor- I mean, he was a nervous wreck about it. Don't you understand the world's going? I said, no, I don't care, really. Don't care a bit. I'm not going to stay up at night worried about an asteroid 10 years from now that's going to hit the world and going to destroy. I'm living, to, I'm just trying to make it the next week. Y'all, how many can get a witness right there? Hey, I, listen, if, that, if, it hits, if it hits, it hits. But I believe that we need to understand that there's so many things to worry about that sometimes we just we want to stop being an adult. Remember that old song, uh, Toys R Us? I don't want to grow up, I'm a Toys R Us kid. Well, they, they, then Toys R Us went under. <laughs> I guess it went out, but wait. Hey, Sometimes you just don't want to grow up. You just don't want to get old because of all the things, listen to me, all the things that are going on in life, the bills that come in and the things. that. And sometimes you don't like growing up because of the responsibility and the anxiousness that comes along with those things. A few, uh, it was this past week, uh, my wife and I went to a parent-teacher meeting at the uh, middle school with uh, we were Jake's going into high school next year so they called this big meeting with all the parents and we uh, were in there and it's kind of new to us we this is our oldest and so we're in there and they're telling us the paths that these these uh, kids can take they can take three different paths and one is more of a career path that leads to more of a trade and and uh, then the others, if their grades are really good, they can go through a college prep or an honors. And, and so we were just having to make some... We, we met with a, a guidance counselor and we were talking with them. And we got a general idea of what our son needs to do next year and the classes that he needs to take. So we went home and uh, I said, Jake, can you sit down? And uh, he sat down and I said, here's, what's, here's what you're going to do next, next year. And we just started telling him the classes that he was going to have to take. And I said, you're going to the school and this is going to be your teacher and we're going to help, you know, get your classes all together. And he looks at us. I don't want to embarrass him tonight, but I do. (laughs) And he just starts to cry. And he says, I don't want to grow up. (laughs) And he's bigger than I am. Tears are hitting me on top of the head. I don't want to grow up, Dad. I don't want to grow up. Hey, you know what? It scared him to death. Hey, this is, this is no longer middle school. This is no longer elementary. How, is life not the same way? I don't, want to, I don't want to face that. God, I don't want to do that. God, I, don't, I didn't know I was going to see that. God, I don't want to grow up. I don't want to do... Hey, that's exactly how life is. He says, be anxious for nothing. So we see there is a need for peace. How many of you know that we need that peace tonight? We need that peace tonight. I need that peace. You need that. Hey, let me just say this. We don't know what tomorrow... Look at me. Look at me. You don't know what's going to be around the corner tomorrow. Some of you, every time you come to church, you don't listen. You don't, you don't listen to nothing I say. You come in here and you're looking around. You're fiddling. And, but I'm telling you right now, there's some of you that's went through some of some things and you're listening. Some of you is going to need... Preacher, I wish I'd know what... I just preached on it the other night on how to have peace and you're not listening. Here's how you have peace. You get in God's Word and you pray for peace and you trust God and He gives it to you. So there, there's a peace for it. But number two, look at it in verse 7 of Philippians. I, I'm, it's a very simple message, but look at what he says. And the peace of God which passeth all understanding shall keep your hearts and minds through Christ Jesus. So here's how we get that peace. We know we need peace, but here's how we get it. It's the peace of God that that word... It means, in verse 7, the peace of God which passeth, it transcends. That same passeth, it means that it transcends. It goes above and beyond all understanding. That's the kind of peace I need. I don't know about you, but that's the kind of peace that I need. 
It's a supernatural peace in its power. It's supernatural. This is the peace. Notice where this peace comes from. It's the peace of God. It's not the peace of man. See, look at me, church. You can't, I cannot give you this peace. This, the Word of God in verse 7 does not say the peace of your pastor. Because your pastor cannot give you this because I need it. What if you walked in my office and you said, Preacher, I'm facing something and I'm telling you, I can't, I can't get I'm pacing and I, I just don't know what to do. And I look at you and say, man, I don't know what to do either. Because before you walked in here, I had to put my cigarette out. I'm joking. Before you walked in here, before you walked in here, I drunk 14 cups of coffee and I, I was pacing like a wild animal and I didn't know what to do. And then you walked in, you said, Pastor, you mean you worry about stuff? Are you kidding me? It does not say the peace of your pastor. It says the peace of God. See, God don't walk up in heaven around the throne saying, man, I tell you what, what are we going to do down there? I mean, Iran's shooting missiles down into, into them military bases and I didn't expect all that. And yeah, this person over here is sick and that caught me off guard. I didn't know what that was going to, I didn't know what that was about. And, and, and this over here, this, this happened over here and I didn't know. No, God knows. And He's the one that gives the peace. It's the peace of God. And I thank God that no man can give this peace that God can give. It's the peace of God. It's supernatural. It's the peace that passeth all understanding. There's a verse that I, I was just thinking about. It just jo uh, jumped in my mind. And I want to read it to you correctly. John chapter 14, and I believe it is in verse number 27. Here it is. Jesus said this, Peace I leave with you, my peace I give unto you, not as the world giveth, give I unto you. Let not your heart be troubled, neither let it be afraid. You say, preacher, where did that come from? It came from the mouth of the Lord Jesus. He said, this peace I have left with you. Church, there's something, I, it's hard to explain, but there is something about the peace of God that when He gives it to you, you just know everything's going to be alright. Hey, I don't know if you've ever been in that situation before, but I know this, as your pastor and as a human and as a Christian, there's been times where I've not known what to do. There's times where I didn't know I was going to get behind the pulpit and have enough energy and enough wherewithal just to preach to you. But peace comes over me. And that same peace that I have and the same peace that I've experienced is the same peace you can have as well. Right. It's a supernatural peace. It's a surpassing peace. It's a surpassing in its promise. See, notice what it says. Look at it. Which passeth all understanding. It surpasses all understanding. It's a peace that no one can completely understand. I've heard people, and, and I'll just use this for an illustration, but dealing with Brother Akenya just in the sudden loss of Miss Cerise, he'll say to me from time to time, Pastor, I just can't explain it. I just can't explain it, but there's just peace. I wish we could explain it at times. I, I don't know. I wish we could put it into words, but man cannot because it surpasses all understanding. Oh, yeah, I understand that. No, nobody can say that. The world can't understand that. The world looks at our situation and says, How in the world do you make it? Peace, peace, marvelous peace coming down from the Father above. Hey, it comes from... You say, well, I just don't understand how you're able to put one foot in front of the other. I don't either because it surpasses all understanding. And it transcends everything that we can think of. It is peace beyond human possibility. Many of you have either been in a hurricane before or seen them on television. I uh, was a little boy, but I remember Hurricane Hugo coming through. And uh, it took the roof off of our church. It, it dropped it, I mean, completely off and, and, and threw it out. It was a mess. And Hurricane Hugo was bad. There's been a bunch of hurricanes since that have been terrible, especially on the eastern and, and in Florida and different areas. And so no matter, most of us has been through some type of hurricane. You understand that those hurricanes uh, can blow very, I mean, winds can be clocked at, 
150 mile an hour plus. I mean, they can be very, very damaging. But do you understand that just 25 feet below that hurricane, when it comes out in the sea and it starts, and often it starts on the other side of the ocean and it's coming, buddy, it's stage one, stage two, stage three, category four, and then it goes into category five and it's the biggest and the baddest and it's going to do the most damage. Do you understand just 25 feet below the surface of that hurricane and that water is the calmest water? That water down below is not stirring around and that hurricane's on the surface and it's just gathering strength and it's just picking up steam. But below the hurricane, there's peace. And Christians were not supposed to stay on the surface. We're supposed to go deep for God. That's right. And deep is often where the peace is. I was reading a story about a, a, a big uh, barge that was stuck I believe in one of the hurricanes, and that barge was stuck offshore. Matter of fact, I think, if I'm not mistaken, that barge, that big boat is still there. You can still see it's off the coast of Florida, somewhere uh, there maybe in the Gulf. I'm not exactly sure, but that hurricane came. And those barges are not made to be in shallow water. And that big barge now has washed up on shore and there's nothing that can move it hardly. They, it's been there for years because it was in that shallow part and when the storm came, the storm literally moved it on shore and nobody can do much about it. You know, a lot of Christians, when the storm blows in their life, it just pushes them ashore. And you know what we're supposed to do as a Christian? We're supposed to launch out. Let's get deep. Let's get deep. We see some things. Let me give you a couple very, very, um, very simple things. That ha how do we get peace? I want you to. I want you to remember this tonight. How do we get peace? Peace will come through prayer. I think we find this in our text tonight. It will come through prayer. Notice what it says, and and this goes back into our text. It says, "Let's go back to verse six. Here's how we get the answer to peace. It says, be careful for nothing or be anxious for nothing. Here it is. But in everything by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving, let your requests be made known unto God. So here it is. I have, here's, here's the key to getting the peace of God. The first thing we see is pray specifically. Pray specifically. Where is that? It's found right here in verse number 6. Be careful for nothing, but in everything and everything by prayer. Pray specifically. So what specifically is causing your anxiety? What is it that you should be praying about right now? It might be your job. It might be a child. It might be a relationship. It may be a health issue, your finances, a burden of some sort. Pray specifically. I mean in every situation, everything. So you write it down. So you get it specific with God. Get a blank piece of paper like this. And uh, man, I about lost my prayer list. And uh, but you understand? Get get this uh, a blank piece of paper. Or something and 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 pray specifically. Hey, write it down. I need a job. I need. Uh, this bill paid, I, and write and pray and pray and pray. You say, well, don't God already know it? But He wants you to name it out. In every situation. I've got a wayward son. That's what you, it, it, some of you want. I'm praying for a, maybe a child that needs to come. Specific prayers. God, I want you to take care of this need. And by the way, when He takes care of it, it's personal. I want you, I'll be praying for it. I want you to do that. But when we're in there alone with God, it needs to be specific prayers. Yeah. Consistently. Now here's the trouble. The trouble comes, but then when the trouble leaves, you don't pray anymore. Everything by prayer and everything by press known is an ongoing action. So we pray on that list tonight in your mind that's for God to work. How about the third thing? Tonight? Everything by prayer and supplication by supplication or petitions, that's what it is, expectantly. That word petition, claiming His promise. And by the way, I want to thank you for what you're going to do. Expecting God to work. This is why praying according to God's Word is so powerful. Because we can pray the Word 
And you are praying for what God has already said in your life. So pray expectantly. How about this, number four? Pray thankfully. Pray thankfully. Notice he says with thanksgiving. It's as if he's already come through. Just get down on your knees and when you're saying, Lord, I'm praying for that job and, and I just want to go ahead and thank you for what you're going to offer on a house. And Lord, it's, it's going to be a miracle, but let me just go ahead and thank you for what you're going to do. Lord, what you're going to do. Hey, it's time that we thank the Lord. When you pray about your finances and your needs, thank God. He says this at the end of that, and let your requests be made known unto God. So not only does... This expression means that we are continually praying, but it literally means that we are going to let go of our requests. So I want you to get this in your mind tonight. We're bringing on. You're picking your request up and you're letting it go. Let it go. Let it go. Can't hold me back anymore. Who doesn't have of your anxiety and your problems and actually give it to God. Right. Give it to God. Let's, let's stop hanging on to those things. Hey, let me end with this. Prayer brings peace because prayer brings depth and out. Because there's, there's a side of God that you have not... You, 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 know, you know about God. You can read your Bible. But he is until you've spoken to Him. And by the way, He wants to commune with you. And prayer is... Do you care enough for Him? Last Tuesday, we opened up the church for prayer. We, we started early, 6.15 and then for work. Come in, there's going to be two times that you can come in and pray. And we'll leave the mornings and pray. Pray. You say, why, why Tuesday? I'm not really sure. I just feel like we need to dedicate a certain day to the Lord, a certain morning as a church to come to His house and pray. Prayer changes things. And I want you to pray specifically. Hey, if there's a need that you have, uh, Brother Lee, we could get some index cards and maybe a few pens around the altar, write them down. And when someone comes in, they can look at that need and pray for your need. Just write it down. You say, well, I want somebody else to pray for this. Hey, pray about it. Pray specifically about it. How about this? We got that little church app there that you can download and you can see all them prayer requests. What a great thing because people have submitted stuff on there and you can look at that as you're praying and say, hey God, so and so uh, has put something on there about prayer and so and so's got this and there's a need here and there's a need there. Hey, it's time that we stop worrying about things and start giving them to God. And I believe that's exactly, exactly what the Apostle Paul was telling us prayer prayer. Now name your anxiety right now. Name You know what it is in your head. You know what's been wor- bothering you, what's been worrying you. Pray about it specifically to the Lord this evening. Release it to God. Ask for peace, expecting Him to give that peace. And go ahead and thank Him in advance for that peace that's beyond possible. It's beyond human comprehension. And ask God to give it to you. And listen... I believe for seekers, I believe for those that really want to seek out God in their life and to have that intimate relationship with the Lord, you will, you will be blown off your feet when you really truly have a prayer life. I believe, I believe all failures are prayer failures. I really believe that. I believe most of the failures that we have in life, if not all of them failures, are because we have lack of faith in prayer. Let's not leave here tonight worried about a situation. I don't know who holds tomorrow as far as I don't know what's in tomorrow, but I know who holds tomorrow. It's it's the Lord. I'm I'm not sure what is around the corner, but I just know I'm going to trust Him. Let's close our eyes and bow our heads this evening for prayer. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank You so much for this evening. We thank You for the Word of God. And Lord, I pray that tonight for just these next couple moments we can get some victory in this matter of our anxious, nervous, worrying, our lives tonight. I pray You'll help us tonight. Lord, if we're not praying like we should, and all of us can... All of us can do better. All of us can do better.
Lord, I pray that we as a church could band together and see the impossible done in the matter of prayer. Please, God, help us. Help us in this matter of prayer. We thank you.